My name's Tom Ross and welcome to the Honest Entrepreneur Show, where I'm bringing you tried and tested advice to help your online business without any of the bullshit. Today, I'm sharing my honest experience building my personal brand over the last five months. This is my personal branding journey so far. So here we are guys, five months into this show and it feels very real. It feels crazy to be honest. I feel like quite a lot has happened and I thought this could be hopefully quite an interesting episode for all of you because I know a lot of you, you might not consider it to be a personal brand but you are sharing work, you're sharing parts of yourself, you're building up profiles and audiences on social media. So I kind of lump all of that stuff into the world of personal branding. And you know I love the early game stuff. I don't find it so interesting with the A-listers who've been doing this for 20 years and they're at this unattainable place and it's super unrelatable. I always find it so interesting, the people that are at the start and they're in the trenches with you. And I think I'm definitely in that place because this whole journey so far has been fun. There's been a lot of lessons that I'm going to get to in this episode. But it's not exactly a breakout success yet. It's very early days. It's very fledgling. And so I'm hoping that some of my feelings and emotions and experiences around building this up in the first few months are going to be super relatable and hopefully give you some clarity. So first of all, how has it actually been going? I mean, you know, I'm not really one for numbers, but I'm going to kind of give you some memorable moments, uh, successes and stats off the top of my head. I know yesterday um, I just crossed over 300 subscribers on my YouTube. Don't worry about some of these numbers sounding very tiny. They uh, they are pretty tiny and I'm going to get to that in a second. But yeah, 300 subscribers. So that was a win on YouTube after five months. Uh, The podcast has been steadily growing. Again, pretty small numbers right now. Um, But I know in the last four months, December did about 300 downloads, January was about 700, February was 1,050 I think and then March was 1,750. So even though they're quite small it's showing real nice momentum and it's starting to build up a little bit of steam which is really really cool. Uh, I'm getting on a few different platforms, I'm like early stage LinkedIn, I joined Twitter today uh, which is ridiculous, I'm only about 10 years late to that platform. Uh, but I'm going to see what I can do on there. Just kind of, I'm enjoying the process, to be honest. I'm enjoying getting on all these platforms and learning them and not just being an onlooker, actually learning the nuances and how they work. Um, Other cool wins. So Instagram's been going pretty well, um, to be honest. You guys know I'm all about the engagement instead of the top level vanity metrics. I talk about that a lot on this show. And the engagement's been very, very good. I would say on average, the posts seem to be getting like, 30 comments a post or something nuts and that's more than some people I know that have a hundred thousand followers and I've only recently crossed two thousand I think at the time of recording it's like two thousand two hundred or something so again very early days um, but the engagement has been unbelievable so thank you everyone listening to this and watching this I really really appreciate you guys I always say this but it's so true your engagement is what drives me it's what motivates me it's what keeps me wanting to do this show and wanting to put it out so it means a lot speaking of Instagram engagement the DMs I've heard this from people they say it all goes down in the DMs I've been getting about 40 to 50 DMs a day which has been nuts. And this has been steadily building. I think as people realize that it's legit when I actually say, I'm going to help people for free. And I love kind of giving out all this value and there's no catch. There's no upsell. People are starting to cotton on, which is awesome, but also can be overwhelming at times. So when you've got 40 to 50 DMs a day and a good number of them are like videos, audio clips and heartfelt essays. I'm getting people where they can't fit it in one message. So they have like four messages deep with their life story and stuff that, you know, real stuff they're actually struggling with. It's super humbling that they send that over. But at the same time, you kind of open your inbox on some days and it's like, damn, okay. But this is this is my truth. This is the reality. And there's no way I can complain about that because that is literally what I'm trying to achieve. If I'm saying, I love engagement, I want engagement, I love helping people and I want to help people, 
that when people start asking me for help, sometimes I have to kick myself because I get those days of like, oh man, like I feel a bit burnt out on this or I can't be bothered or like, oh, this is a bit of a drain that I have to sit and do this. I think that's nuts because this is exactly what I asked for. And so luckily, the vast majority of the time, I love chatting with those people. I love getting back to all of you. uh, And it's genuinely a really fun experience. I think a big thing that I've learned about personal branding is how it really is all on you. And I built out this kind of part-time team around what I'm doing. I've got Marco behind the camera here. I've got Rachel helping me as well, a uh, community member, um, and a few other people who I'm starting to kind of let me scale things out. But ultimately, this is my project. I realized that it's on my shoulders. And so the success or failure really maps to my level of investment and effort and talent. And that can be quite a bitter pill to swallow at points because there are no excuses. There's nowhere to hide. This is not like if you run a company and you can kind of blame the market or the economy or your team or anything like that. Like, this is my thing. It's on me. Um, And that really is like, It's a bit of a slice of humble pie at points because when I'm sat here with my 300 YouTube subscribers and my whatever it is now, 200 downloads per podcast, um, it's easy to kind of think, oh, well, maybe I suck. And you, you get that imposter syndrome. And yeah, I have to kind of shake myself and, and and say, you know, it's early days. This is what you preach. It takes patience, all that kind of thing. But equally, you get those days where you're like, oh man, maybe I'm just not good enough. Maybe I don't have the talent or like, I, I'm very confident. I know what I'm talking about, but then it's like, maybe I'm not good enough in how I present it or I'm not good enough at marketing myself and all these kind of clouds of doubt start to come over you and it's a very very common thing like I just got done talking to one of our team today and she'd been doing a personal project kind of on Instagram around her day job at our company and she was kind of explaining how it's gone a little bit cold she's almost like put it on hold or given up with it a little bit right now because she was finding it quite stressful a bit pressured having to to do it regularly and she ended up comparing herself to other people who were doing it bigger and better than her and um, you know it, it took a bit of the fun out of it just having to show up every day and grind it out but that's the reality like it isn't always fun and if it was that easy everyone would do it and I don't judge her for a second because that is normal that is how most people feel and most people do give up with this stuff at some point. I think the only reason I'm sticking at it is because I've done this for enough years and I've got enough context to know this is the reality. You have to just kind of push through those hard days and those hard weeks. It's just how it plays out. It really is a grind. And I've talked about this on this show. It gets to the point of seeming crazy. When you look at how much work and effort and stress and burnout and all those things are involved for basically very little slash no gain, for years and years and years, it's a ludicrous proposition, right? It's like, why should I keep doing this? And I think a big part of it is it takes faith. This so far has been an exercise in my faith because I have to believe it's going to pay off uh, at a bigger scale one day. I have to believe it will continue to grow. I have to believe that I'm gonna see this magical uptick at some point. The way I think about personal branding Um, or really building anything meaningful. It's obviously not an overnight success, but I believe it kind of grows very, very slowly. And then it kind of starts to pick up a bit of steam and then it gets faster and faster and it starts to grow much faster. So it's this kind of exponential upswing. And it works the same way that compound interest does. If you are familiar with with that and finances or, or stocks or anything like that, it kind of just, you know, adds up very, very little at a time. And then it really starts to build momentum. And it's that momentum which seems to be the elusive end point that we're always hoping we're going to reach. I think another way of thinking about that momentum is the law of attraction when it comes to followers. Often people don't want to follow someone who's got 10 followers. They assume their content is bad. They assume they're not worth their time. Yet if someone has 100,000 followers, it works the same way as a planet. The bigger the planet, the more gravity it has and the more followers get pulled in naturally. Even if the content is the same, the person with 100,000 followers 
versus the person with 10, it's going to attract a lot more people signing up and subscribing every single day simply because of the social proof of them appearing to be bigger and better. And I can already feel the very early stages of this. So I can feel on Instagram with over 2,000 followers, I am attracting more people following me now than when I had 200. It's just the law of the game. And so I'm excited to hopefully try and propel that momentum so when I hit 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 and beyond, it should get theoretically easier and easier and quicker and quicker to build up steam. I have to say a big, big win has been uh, personal for me because I know I had real confidence issues around speaking to camera. Speaking in general uh, has always been like public speaking has been something I'm terrified about. And being able to sit and do this show comfortably, being able to now walk down the street, talking to my phone, giving people video responses and insight in front of sometimes crowds of people giving me weird looks and truly not giving a shit has been a very, very big thing for me. And I talk about this where confidence, I think, lies the other side of fear. It really is true. It's so rewarding to be able to do something that at one point scared the living shit out of you and now becomes every day because for me that signifies growth. And so as much as my follower counts are kind of creeping in the right direction as are my download numbers, I feel like personally uh, my character and my confidence is actually doing the exact same thing. And I think that's very common for any of you who are putting yourself out there in some propensity to feel that personal growth is huge. And it's one of the untangible wins that no one really talks about. All the articles out there are like how to get 10,000 followers, how to get this and that. They don't talk about what it actually does to you as a person. And, you know, forget the the confidence, just the the enjoyment, the fulfillment the realization of I'm going more all in on what I really care about. I said that I love helping people. I knew that in my heart. And then I went after it with my actions. That's been really, really huge. And I've had a blast over the last few months meeting so many of you, helping so many of you. I've sent literally, it's got to be more than hundreds at this point. Yeah, like thousands of messages trying to just offer whatever value I can to thousands of people And the warmth and the positivity and the gratitude that comes back from that is fucking awesome. I love that stuff. And so I guess making that uncomfortable leap into the unknown, into something that I think is true to me and that I'm going to love, has been really, really rewarding. Some other wins that have come from all of this have been, I've been landing a lot more interviews. So again, I'm not sure how many I've done, but it's been dozens now where I've jumped on other people's shows and because of building this personal brand I've been able to to leverage that and leverage myself. I find it a lot harder when you are faceless and hiding behind your company to open some of these doors. People really like dealing with people and I've noticed a much better hit rate and a lot more doors opening being able to actually communicate as me, whether it's for my personal brand or on behalf of my company, to be honest. Um, When you're messaging behind a company account, you get a lot of silence, but actually being able to put myself out there um, as an individual has been huge. And I'm making some amazing friends. I've made some incredible kind of connections and, and networking and all that stuff but it hasn't felt like networking. It hasn't felt forced. I'm literally just connecting with like-minded people. We're on the same wavelength and I'm building these amazing connections that I know are going to serve me for years and years to come. Um, I don't even know how in all cases, but some of these people like a year ago, I would have thought they're untouchable, they're unreachable. And now I'm, I'm chatting with them weekly. And I feel like a lot of that has come from my personal brand. And as a side note to that, I talked about this earlier on my Instagram, but I feel like your personal brand is your public resume. It's your public reputation. And it's such a powerful thing because the world is full of bullshit artists, right? The number of people I've been on calls with where they're trying to sell me on them and they're saying like, hey, I'm great to work with and I'm lovely and I have integrity and all that kind of stuff. Most people tell each other that, but very few actually live it and breathe it and back that up. And so to have essentially a public record of my character has been a tremendous asset because anyone who looks me up can see, oh, wow, he actually responds to every comment. He actually treats his community really well. He actually cares. 
and and he just puts in the work to back up what he's saying and not only that but his message and everything he's told me he's put that out consistently for months and months and months and so i can tell he's not just telling me what i want to hear because he's publicly shared all of his values and that is huge i actually think that's one of the key benefits of building a personal brand is you're just planting these seeds publicly for everyone to kind of judge you by and that can be negative but i think more often than not it's positive um and for people to have that as a reference is fucking huge because it essentially sells you for you i think as well it's been refreshing um being able to truly be me online because i am pretty much entirely me with my company but equally we're a brand we're a company we're representative of our community and our team and it isn't 110% me so in my personal content I can really be me I can swear for example something that I don't really do around my company I can share more of like my stupid dad jokes and things that make me me I can I can share like stupid inappropriate stuff that I find funny and I can just not give a shit. It's like the uncensored version of me. It's more what my friends get. And that has been so cathartic just to be able to let go. And a lot of this stuff I really had anxiety around. When I was putting out early content like this, I was really panicking. Like, what are people going to think? Are they going to judge me? Should I be doing this? And now again, I just don't seem to care as much. And it is so freeing. It's almost become, even doing this show, right? This show is like therapy for me i can just sit here and kind of work through big issues um with regards to entrepreneurship and myself and i can just put it out there and it's like a weight off of my chest so i guess i'm trying to think what are the key lessons that i've learned a lot of it i think i was able to predict before i really jumped in so i knew it was going to take ungodly amounts of patience uh, and it was going to take a long time and it is i predicted that a lot of the benefits wouldn't be revenue or follow account and it would be stuff like self-discovery uh, self-development and just building connections that are going to pay off in the long term even if they don't immediately i think i predicted at one point how it's like planting seeds and i understood the theory of that but living it now i can really see how that's playing out because i feel like every community member every dm i send every comment i respond to every interview i jump on every video i put out here on youtube every audio podcast i release it's all just a little opportunity a little touch point for someone to discover me and what i'm all about and each one of those open up possibilities and when you leave thousands and thousands of them over many years i think that exponentially just kind of like webs out right so maybe i was interviewed on someone else's podcast they discovered my stuff they resonate with a piece of content they dm me we make a connection and then we go on to start a business together or someone else recommends me to a friend and that friend recommends me to another friend and that's a big person in my industry who opens up a huge door for me and propels my career. You don't know how this stuff is going to play out, but I feel like the more you share and put yourself out there in an authentic way, and also you work hard enough to put out a volume of work, I feel like it's just more seeds and it's more doors to be opened. I just, I keep having these kind of moments of serendipity where I look at it and try and map it back to the inception point and I'm like, oh shit, like that person wants me on their show because that thing happened two months ago or that person's now a fan for life because of this interaction we had three weeks ago, whatever it might be. Um, and I think it's good not to overthink this stuff. Like a lot of people are, are way too analytical, but when, when you're just constantly putting out good, like when I respond to the 40 to 50 DMs a day, you think I'm going back and checking like exactly what happened with each one. I'm just putting it out there. Like a lot of people might not even get back to me or they might just like my response and it goes nowhere. But for the people that do get back to me and those paths open up, I follow them and I go after them. It's more just that frenetic, like, you know, put that video out, record that story, respond to that person, go through the comments. It's constantly looking outwards. And again, I've talked about this in my content, it frees up a lot of insecurity because when you're bouncing around in your own head and you're frozen, that's a shitty place to be as an entrepreneur. And I feel like the more I chase this personal brand thing, the more I get out of my own head and out into the world. It's like the opposite of being a hermit 
right? It's networking on steroids. And I hate the word networking, but essentially, instead of being in this private bubble, I am just making friends and connections, and meeting cool people every day and every week. And if I'm able to do that five months in with my tiny following in the scheme of things and, you know, relatively modest traction, then where's it going to be in six months, 12 months or 10 years? Because that's where I'm looking. And I predict, hopefully, in a pretty exciting place. And if this much activity and this many positives are coming this early on in the game, I think it's going to blow my mind how much abundance and opportunity opens up in a decade. So I implore you, whatever it is you're building, please stick at it. Please don't give up. Please just get yourself out there as much as possible. Stop overthinking stuff. Just share, be yourself, push through those comfort zones, push outside those barriers and and really just try and overcome the fear of it and just keep doing it and have a little bit of faith. Okay, that's all I've got, guys. Um, I'm going to be honest. I partly did this episode because I really, I'm determined. Like when I want to achieve something, it's kind of done. Um, but I'm patient enough to wait for it. So I really, really, really believe that in 10 years, this is going to be a considerable platform for me. And I really want to be able to look back at my younger and probably much more handsome self uh, in 10 years time and think, oh my God, look at that, that kid five years in, uh, five months rather into this thing and just how humble the beginnings were. And I want to be able to look back and tell myself, well done for sticking with it and staying the course because look where things are at now. So fingers crossed and to everyone watching and listening again, it means the world and thank you for helping me one step further along that path. Your time and attention mean the absolute world and I'm here for you in return to support you on your journey. So thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Hey, thanks so much for watching this episode. Really, really appreciate you being here with me. If you haven't yet, please do subscribe right here on YouTube. Remember, tick the little bell icon so that you get proper notifications. I really hope you're enjoying the show. I hope you'll stick around for the upcoming episodes. I really want to keep bringing you as much value as possible. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you guys soon.